Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. In this quick guitar tricks, we're looking at Ingve J. Malmsteen's sweeping, specifically his three string sweep picked arpeggios. The basic idea, as you may have gathered, is to play an arpeggio. I've gone with the C major because it's one of the easier ones to start with, and playing it down, 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 up, pull off, up. We get a nice triplet group of six, so we can repeat that. Ingwe's three string sweep. Okay, but how does Ingwe actually do this? Fair point, so now I'll explain the technique, then go on to explore his most common arpeggios, some inversions, how to use them over chords, other picking versions, and any bonus tips that spring to mind. If you want a much more in-depth look at several areas of Ingwe's playing, check out my Pro Tips video tutorial card up there. In terms of the picking mechanics, I'm downward pick slanting for the first three strokes, then switching to upward pick slanting, pull off, upward slant again, but as soon as I'm finished with that last note, right back to downward slanting. Ingve might do this as all downward. You might be able to do that as well. If I try, I hit a wall pretty quickly because I'm having to do this sort of jerky motion between the E and the B strings where I leave the string then have to go back to it. Which just feels odd and slows me down. You can hear there it was pretty messy. Uh, if you do downward pick slanting all the way from time to time, you might end up hammering on this note on the B string rather than picking it, which is totally legit something we'll touch on a little bit later as a preemptive bonus trick of sorts. Yeah, on a side note, uh, my fingers seem to help out with the pick slanting switch a little bit here. Might not work for everyone, but... Uh... <laughs> I'm using the knuckle of my finger a little bit to help angle the pick, some of the time anyway. So before I get all the rage comments coming in... Ingve will often start this pattern on the first upstroke, like this. Exactly the same as we did before, only starting on a different note. To me, starting on the downward sweep seems a bit easier to follow and get the hang of, so that's why I opted to teach it in that way. On that note, I'm going to go for a bonus tip. You can play this arpeggio starting on any of these notes. So let's go back to the first way I showed you, then just go through all the six ways you can play it using this idea. The first way, which we already know. Starting on the next note, so here it's a down, down, up, peel off, up, down. Starting on the next note, we'd get a down, up, pull off, up, down, down. Then we get the textbook Ingvy one, the up, pull off, up, down, down, down. Okay, starting with the pull-off is a bit odd, so the first time round, let's just hammer on the note from nowhere. Then we can pull off to it on every other repeat. So it'd be hammer, up, down, 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 up. And if we were to repeat and loop it, we could just pull it off. So hammer, up, down, 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 up, pull off, up, down, down, down. And finally, we have up, down, 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 up, pull off. Yeah. 
This is just to show you that with one picking mechanic, you've really got six ways of playing the same arpeggio, which becomes much, much more relevant when you start adding in new shapes or cards. So on that note, let's look at three string arpeggio shapes for the most commonly used cards. First up, G major in the root position. Going G, B, D, G, D, B, G. And again. First inversion starts on the B, same notes in a different order. We get B, D, G, B, G, D, B. The second inversion up here, uh, we get a D to begin with. Then we get a G, B, D, B, G, and back to D. Cool, let's do the same for E minor to keep it all in the same key. We have E, G, B, E, B, G, E. As a side note, I'm pretty sure Ingve uses that uh, shape in his Gimme Gimme version, his cover of that song, so I'll put a card up to that, although it's in D, it's in a slightly different key, but I think you can use that shape there, as a side note anyway. So uh, the first inversion we would get would be starting on G, and we'd have G, B, E, G, E, B, G. So with this one you might want to keep your finger flat and roll it or kind of use slightly more of the side of the knuckle or just kind of uh, almost kind of pivot it. To, to be honest I don't particularly like doing that move, it's never felt uh, that natural to me and I, I do try to avoid it wherever I can. Uh, with ones like this I would try to use a bit of la really light palm muting just to help tidy things up a bit so a bonus trick for you there. And the second inversion here we have the final one, it starts on B. Then we have E, G, B, G, E, B. That last one there is probably my favourite sweep shape. Diminished and diminished seventh sweeps are the only other kind of main sweeps other than major and minor that spring to mind, which you can use in place of a dominant seventh and a dominant seventh flat nine respectively. Fully diminished is first up here, so we have an F sharp, A, C, D sharp, C, A. And this shape being made up of exclusively minor thirds just inverts into itself. So the same shape but the notes change order just like before. So our first inversion would be an A, C, D sharp, F sharp, C, D. And up three semitones, a uh, flat third for the second inversion, starting on C, D sharp, F sharp, A, F sharp, D sharp. And since we have four different notes here, the root, the flat third, the fifth, and the double flat seven, we also get a third inversion, the twentieth fret, we have D sharp. F sharp, A, C, A, F sharp. 
And if we go higher, if you've got enough frets, you'll reach an F sharp here. So just the same as before, but up an octave. Cool, so a diminished triad. Uh, the first two of these shapes aren't that commonly used, but I think it's worth showing them nonetheless. Being a triad, we only get three note values. We get an F sharp, an A, and a C. The shape goes like this, F sharp, A, C, F sharp, C, A. bit of a stretch, so as a bonus tip you can always tap that note if you prefer. The first inversion, we go up to the A and we start there. Then we have C, F sharp, A, F sharp, C. And the second inversion, a bit more of a common shape here, starting on the C. We have C, F sharp, A, C, A, back to F sharp. So just as a reminder, you can start any of these on a different note, just like I did with that major arpeggio, but I'll leave trying that out to yourselves. So next up, let's look at how we can use this to follow a chord progression. I'm going to be using a section from my Engvi style backing track in E minor, which I'll link to up in the corner, which accompanies my Pro Tips tutorial. Uh, specifically, the chord progression I'll be looking at is the one that is E minor, F diminished, D, G, C, a7, D, B7. So with that in mind, I'm going to start off with an E minor. Let's just keep it in root position. Oh yeah, as a bonus trick here, what I'm going to do is use a slightly different uh, picking variation here. I'm just going to go one note on every string. We're just going to go down, down, down. There is a song in that uses this type of picking in that I've completely forgotten the name of, so I'll add in a bit of text in the edit. But yeah, that's all I'm going to do here for the first thing round is just down, down, down. Uh, this should work pretty well with all word uh, downward pick slanting using that approach. For the F diminished, I'm going to stick to root position again. Only three notes, so we'll just do these ones here. Uh, D, I'm just going to stick with root position. Let's go here. And then for G, uh, why not root position again? Smooth the shape up here. Uh, this time I want to change from root position. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to play a C. So that'd be the second inversion I'm using there. For the A7, you can use one of the diminished shapes here. Uh, an A7 is an A, a C sharp, an E, and a G. So a C sharp diminished triad being a C sharp, E, and G will work well. I'm going to go with the second inversion G, C sharp. And we've got the same idea a tone higher going D to the B7, so let's take those last two ideas and just bump them up a tone. So for this D, and for this B7, again a B7 is a B, D, F sharp, A, D sharp diminished is a D sharp, F, A, so it will fit in nicely. Uh, let's just do that first half slowly. Now, that is maybe a bit stock, a bit simple and straightforward, so let's look at changing things up a bit for the repeat. I'll go with Ingvi's preferred picking pattern and start on the second inversion of E minor. I don't want to jump around the fretboard too much, so let's play the uh, F sharp diminished in second inversion here. D. 
D. Uh, I'm going to go with a second inversion, I think. There. That one. Uh, first inversion for the G seems to make sense. A root position for C. A root position for the C diminished as well. Root position for the D major again. Well. Then I'm going to imply a dominant 7, a B dominant 7 flat line, by throwing in a fully diminished D sharp in a root position. And I think I'll resolve to that note to finish things off. The theory here is a bit of a tangent, but I have covered it in my Angry Pro Tips lesson. Anyway, uh, here's what it sounds like played slowly. And the whole thing up to speed. Okay, finally here are some variations you might want to try in terms of the picking. Not the Malmsteen method as far as I'm aware, but still worth knowing or trying out. We can pick every note. I dot for down, 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 up, down, up. You could make the first note on the repeat and up. I find it a bit less natural. As a bonus, you could play it all the gal. Or mix these ideas together. Try hammering on the note on the B string as a note hammer from nowhere on the way back down. So we'd have down, 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 up, pull off, hammer from nowhere. This one rolls a bit better for me if I just go down, 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 hammer, pull off, Hammer from nowhere. In fact, that's probably what I'd end up doing live if I had to play this consistently and well at a fast speed. You could also double up a note to change the rhythm. Down, 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 hammer, pull off, up, up. And of course there are a ton more variations you can try out, so why on earth am I talking about all of these and encouraging them and going on about all this other stuff in an Ingve lesson? Well, firstly it's so it's a more useful, well-rounded lesson that you can apply to other areas. Secondly, his technique might not click with you, but one of these other approaches or your own might be really intuitive, sound and play better. If that is the case, i just go with it. As someone who spent a lot of time studying other players' technique, I would say you run the risk of wasting a lot of time if you get too hung up on playing it the exact same way as them. By all means, it's great to study players, learn good technique and cool new ideas like the Singve Sweep. But having said that, if you can produce pretty much the same sounding sweep with much less time spent on the mechanics behind it, seems like the wiser path. Well, to me anyway. Cool. So that was a rough guide to Inkvader Malmsteen's three string swept arpeggios. This has been Quick Tricks, that's the playlist up there. Check out some of the other stuff I've done, hit subscribe, leave a like and a comment if you want to, and also share and enable notifications with that little bell on the side if you feel so inclined. Cheers guys.